Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to talk about iOS 6. iOS 6 uh, was announced a couple days ago, and the preview was available that day for those developers that actually have a developer account and log in and want to load it on their device. Well, I decided to load it on my iPhone and my iPad. So I've been using it for a few days, and I thought I'd go over some of the new features uh, that they mentioned since uh, it's been released. So it's in beta form, it's pretty buggy, just like most of the revisions are. Uh, I did upgrade to iOS, I think, 3, 4, and 5 uh, with a developer account. Out of those, this is the most stable and has uh, quite a few interesting changes. I'm not sure that this is really the final look uh, the way it will look, but there's some things that work in it and some that don't. So let's go ahead and get on to the first thing that they announced was Maps. So here is Maps. And Maps is a pretty nice application. Uh, it's a little bit slow right now, but it's a pretty nice application uh, in that uh, it's Apple's Maps. It's not Google's Maps anymore. And you can see it, it moves pretty quickly, uh, but there are some hiccups. We can spin around. Uh, we have some options here for traffic. We can show standard, hybrid, 3D. This particular one doesn't show very well, but if we, we go in here, uh, and look for a city like Sydney. Let's see if it's in here. Uh, I was messing around with it earlier. Let's try Sydney, Australia. It actually is a lot uh, more realistic with 3D models and things like that. If I zoom in here, we'll switch to 3D. It'll take a minute. You can see it loads pretty slow, and I'm sure that's just because it's a beta things usually speed up over time. You can see this part's pretty quick, uh, but it's still blocky and things it's slow at this point. We'll wait for it to load here a second. And it does have turn by turn directions. So now it's pretty nice uh, that it, it allows you to do that. You can zoom away in and then you'll start to see buildings. So it has these maps built in, turn-by-turn -turn directions, uh, pretty nice, and does a, does a good job of that. Let me go ahead and show you. We'll move on, and I'll show you maps on the iPad in a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Siri. Siri now does sports, turn-by-turn -turn directions, like I mentioned. Uh, it does movies, so I can say, find movies playing near here. And that's interesting. I'm not sure what it means. I don't see anything. Maybe that's because uh, movies are closed right now. It's nighttime. It's 11.32 at night. Oh, there are some late movies, but normally it works, and then we can tap on one. It gives the rating. Uh, you can watch the trailer really quickly. It's pretty nice overall. So we can do that with sports. I don't really watch sports at all, uh, other than maybe the Olympics and X Games, things like that. But let me go ahead and ask it uh, one of those questions. What was the last New York Yankees score? The Yankees narrowly defeated the Braves by a score of 3-2 to two today. So you can see it does some pretty interesting things as far as series concerned. Uh, I thought that was pretty neat. It also has Facebook integration. So if we pull down this bar here, uh, we've got some emails. Here's the, the weather. Uh, tap to tweet, tap to post. You can tap to post from right here. So we can add a location. Post right from here when we're done. It'll send, and that's pretty much it. Now, as far as uh, the Twitter integration really hasn't changed, but you do have those quick options. They added a thing called Passbook which really doesn't do anything right now, but it allow, will allow you eventually to have all of your passes in one place. Uh, one of the examples they gave is if you drive up next to a Starbucks, <laughs> up to a Starbucks, not Starbucks, uh, you drive up next to a Starbucks, what it will do is say, hey, you're near a Starbucks, slide to unlock, and it will unlock and show your little uh, card to scan like you could elsewhere. Face to face time now works over 3G. And there's a couple options I can't really show you because I don't have anyone calling me. Uh, but if I was to get a call, I could slide up here and it will let me respond differently. You can see the camera's a couple different colors. 
Uh, mail's a little bit different. Let me see if I can show you something in mail. See that little animation at the top? Also, these are just Twitter things, so no problem. But see the little animation? They've updated that. Uh, they've also updated uh, a couple different things in mail as far as VIP folders. So if I go into here, SilverWiz, uh, they're following me now, which I appreciate. Uh, they're the company that makes MoneyWiz that I reviewed the other day. We can make this a VIP, flag it, Let's see if we can do that. Uh, well, there should be VIP accounts. However, I have not really set it up as VIP or done anything with that. However, if I go back out here, you can see there's VIP. So we can add a VIP this way, and it will bring up people as a VIP. So uh, I haven't really used that a lot, like I said. A Safari, they've added some things. I don't know what web page I'm on here, but if I hit this button, we'll close this. If I hit my bookmarks, these are the things that are iCloud tabs. So you can see Zolotech, Twitter, things like that. This is what I actually have open on my iPad right now, uh, which is neat. It syncs them all together. If we go on to accessibility, they showed a little bit. They also showed Find My iPhone, Find My Friends. So a couple different features. It really doesn't look too different. There are some differences as far as music goes. Uh, we'll go in here. You can see things look a little bit different, different colors. Podcasts have disappeared. Uh, I use uh, Pocket Cast anyway, but podcasts have disappeared. And let me show you another difference. We'll go here. And we'll go to the keypad. The keypad's changed a little bit. So there's some little things they've changed around. Uh, font settings have changed for sure. Uh, we have Do Not Disturb, which will shut off the phone. Things have kind of changed as far as gotten smaller. You have a privacy area. So a lot of little different changes uh, that I'm noticing here and there. But one of the things you can do is navigation. I have it set up. Uh, I can resume a route. It tells me I'm 10 minutes from my brother's house, 4.3 miles. And what it does is it leaves it up here. And when I get to the location uh, where I need to turn next, it comes over the, the microphone or the speaker or over Bluetooth or whatever and displays it at the top. So they've done a pretty nice job of that. So uh, they've changed the App Store, iTunes, things like that. They're really nice. I'm going to switch over to the iPad, though, and show you maps on iPad. So here is my iPad. Let me zoom out. So let me see if we can find the Sydney Opera House. There we go. It's going to find the Opera House and zoom in. So this is the impressive part. If I zoom in, you can see it's a little bit choppy. We use two fingers. We can tilt it. We can rotate it around. So this whole thing is, is pretty impressive. And uh, there's the bridge in the background. Really cool maps, and they do a great job. Uh, the topography is really nice. You can see a lot of um, you can see a lot of different uh, elevations and things. They've done a really nice job with maps, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. On the iPad, things haven't changed a whole lot, but we do have Siri here as well. Find yesterday's baseball scores. And I don't watch sports, but let's see what it comes up with. Here are the scores from the MLB for yesterday. And you can see you can go through everything, and it gives a little baseball card there. So Siri's built into the new iPad. It doesn't work on the iPad 2, from what I understand, or the original iPad. So that won't work. They've added a clock uh, and a lot of other little changes, little refinements that I appreciate. Uh, uh, but there isn't a whole lot of difference. Let me show you the App Store quickly. They've changed it a little bit. Go back to Featured. And there we go. So Apple mentioned all of these things, and that's why I show you. There's a few things I can't really show. Uh, nothing spectacular, though. Uh, there's little refinements that you can't. Uh, you just don't. You just don't see in the previous version. Uh, you know they've moved Bluetooth out, things like that. So nothing. Nothing mind blowing. The maps is probably the biggest thing, but. You know, we've had maps for a while on phones, so not a huge deal. Uh, but if you have any comments, if you've used iOS 6, uh, place your comments below. Now, I'm going to get the question, I'm sure, how do I get iOS 6? You need a developer account, and you need to have your phone registered in that developer account. If you don't, it won't activate and you won't be able to use your phone. I actually had a problem with that initially. It wouldn't activate properly. So you need to make sure that it's registered in there uh, or know somebody that has a developer account. Either way, it's $100 a year, and you'll be able to use the beta software. 
if you want it just for the software, you're better off waiting when it's more refined and everything's worked out of it. I just like to use it to test it out, and I'll probably switch back uh, at some point just so my phone is more stable and my battery life increases. My battery life has not been great. Uh, you can see here's the lock screen with the GPS on it, so I left that on there. So uh, really cool. Works really great. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please place those below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.